Today we will be looking at the die I pulled out of a PIC microchip. It's a PIC 18F 26J11. Now I used heat as the method for removing the die from the chip, so we should expect to see some imperfections and I can already see a little bit of epoxy still left on it. Here is the JEOL JSM 840. We have the microscope. The console unit, a water recirculation chiller, the power supply, the roughing vacuum pump, and a high pressure nitrogen bottle. Now I will load the sample. I have depressurized the column so it will pull right out. Inside we will see the slide and the stage, and I will Place the sample roughly in the center. I'm using a foil tape to hold on to it. It does cover quite a bit of the sample, but this should keep it from falling into the diffusion pump when it's uh, rotated at an angle as such. So for the startup procedure, first we turn the box on the wall on. Then we turn this switch on the power supply on. We make sure our gas is set at the correct pressure. This part's going to make a little bit of noise, but eventually it calms down. We turn on the water recirculator. It's already set at the right temperature. The high vacuum gauge and the low vacuum gauge are on their own power. So we need to plug that one in. You can see the needle has moved to atmospheric pressure. Finally, we make sure the acceleration voltage is off and the uh, filament knob is turned all the way counterclockwise and we start it up. The vacuum board functions, but it takes quite a while to get to its next stage. So usually I will just run the system in manual mode. That's the switch right here. So we have the rotary pump on and the diffusion pump heaters turning on. And the very first uh, switch to engage is V2. This is from the rotary pump and this is going to begin pumping down the diffusion pumps. We can see the low vacuum is dropping. Of course, the high vacuum is not doing anything just yet. Now engaging V1B and V1A. These will rough down the entire microscope. The vacuum gauge has jumped back to almost atmospheric pressure. Since I had it open, it will take quite a while to pump it down. I will also engage V7. At this point, the microscope is going to continue pumping down for about 10 to 15 minutes. And when it does, we'll see the high vacuum gauge needle should start to hover around 5 times 10 to the negative 5 torr. A few minutes later, we will look to see that the light lights up behind the current meter and we will know we are ready for operation. Okay, low vacuum is uh, there. High vacuum means the column is at the level we need it to be for high voltage application. And we see the current meter has lit up. So the next thing we're going to do is set the uh, SEI switch to SEI for the accelerator for the secondary electron multiplier. And then we're going to turn on the high voltage. I have it set to 15 kV. When adjusting the filament knob, you want to go very slowly, bringing it up. On the meter, because it's set to emission and not filament, we're not going to see anything happen just yet. Um, right around 1 o'clock. As soon as we get to about 1 o'clock, we'll, we'll see the meter start to rise a little bit. 
I turned off the light so that we were better able to see. So now you'll see the meter is starting to rise just a little bit and moving upwards. That should be the first false peak of saturating the tungsten filament. All right, so here is the chip and it's taken me about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so to bring this into focus and get things going. Um, at low magnification, there's quite a bit of noise in the image. I can reduce some of the contrast and take some of the noise out. Um, just, uh, but yeah, so there's the piece of tape. The, the tape is right here, and this is the chip itself that we are looking at. So we'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm not exactly sure what we're looking at. I assume this is some region of transistors. Let's see if I can focus that a little bit more. Alright, here's a semi-decent image. Apologies for the noise that my phone keeps picking up. Um, yeah, so here's the chip. Zoom way out and you can uh, see a large part of the die being held in there by the tape. And we'll go back in and uh, take a look at this region we were just looking at. The, uh, the um, astigmators and the, uh, the gun alignment play a large role in the quality of the image you get and it's, it's decent. It could definitely be improved right now. Of course, if you switch the slow screen capture, you can see it gets quite a bit better. This is where that digital image capture would make a big difference. Um, this high persistent L uh, <laughs> LCD, um, this high persistent display does give you some idea of the quality of image you could be getting, but definitely um, digital capture would be the way to go.